Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I have a very interesting thread that I saw that I wanted to bring y'all because I just thought it was so neat. I don't know. I've always been interested in like, well, all kinds of weird stuff, but like time for sure. Absolutely. Um, so I found this thread and cause like I have as a Christian, a biblical worldview, and it's hard to reconcile that with like what science quote unquote says about physics and about the universe and space and all of that. So I thought that this thread was pretty cool. Um, before I get into it though, just real quick, I would uh, ask that if you don't mind, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. I talk about a lot of very interesting things here and we have fun. So just do it. It doesn't cost you anything, you know, and like the video if you enjoy it, share it and um, comment because I'm always being suppressed. Okay, so I will include the links in the video description, but let's go ahead and get into it. Also, I should probably zoom in a little bit more. Hopefully y'all can read that better. Um, uh, this is from Charles on Twitter. He says, I am disturbed and shaken after learning that one of the mathematicians I revere the most, Henry Poincare, hopefully I'm saying his name right, believed that time was slowing down and that there was almost no way for us to tell. My mind is melting and I can't sleep. And this is a, a picture of Henry there kind of cool. I love old timey stuff like this. You know, I like the outfits. He's got the bow tie. He has on the, uh, what do they call this? These glasses that have the little chain there. It's like a monocle, but there's actually two of them instead of one, but it's sort of like a monocle. What do they call that? I know there's like a name for it though. You guys should let me know. <laughs> let me know in the comment section. Somebody here is like actually intelligent and, uh, you guys know stuff. So also check out the just the cool look at you can see part of his in the reflection there behind him you can see the books he has on his bookshelf leather bound beautiful whatever this thing is here kind of looks like a lamp with this like circle on it i just love stuff like that and i like the outfits you know three-piece suit with the vest and the little uh pocket watch he's got in there or whatever that is it just looks neat okay sorry for spending so much time just spurging about this stuff oh my gosh this is from his book Me the measure of time from 1898 he says in other words it is the side real day that is the duration of the rotation of the earth which is the constant unit of time it is supposed by a new definition substituted for that based on the beats of the pendulum that two complete rotations of the earth about its axis have the same duration. However, the astronomers are still not content with this definition. Many of them think that the tides act as a check on our globe and that the rotation of the earth is becoming slower and slower lower, thus would be explained the apparent acceleration of the motion of the moon, which would seem to be going more rapidly than theory permits because our watch, which is the earth, is going slow. Oh my god. <laughs> I can see why he was having a little meltdown about this. Like, I would be spurging too. I'm probably spiraling right now. Poincare saw more than anyone leaping from mountaintop to mountaintop in a dozen fields. I was obsessively researching Poincare because 20th century topology defines how I think about fate, free will, and history, and the field is in large part downstream from his analysis situs interesting. When you immerse yourself deeply in topology, seeing Poincare see some of Euler's work on polyhedrons and Betty's further steps, and then creating homology, a theory of holes to describe the deep structure of manifolds, can actually be quite moving. I think it's freaking fascinating. I think it's really neat. 
There were moments when I felt like I was sharing in a great mystery, unimaginably privileged to share this glimpse into the nature of reality. We live in a multi-dim manifold, after all, with this strange Frenchman. So, multi-dimensional manifold. What? I don't know. I'm, I'm liking it. I'm agreeing. I'm agreeing. I revered him for showing me these truths, which only make this revelation about time even more frightening to me. I know it has to be true. This info hazard that the duration of every second may be growing imperceptibly longer is pulling me in like a gaping maw, a rift. It's pulling me in too, guys. I don't know. I've written before that in the mid-20th century, rocket launches and nuclear detonations that pierce the firmament have effectively turned the temporal integrity of our world into Swiss cheese. Guys, this could explain, like, the Mandela effect. What? I know, and you're probably thinking... Firmament, we live in outer space. There's a big old universe out there. Blah, 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 blah. Well, I would just ask you, sir, sirs or ma'ams, have you read the Bible? Okay. Yeah, that's right. I know we don't all agree. I have a very diverse and different audience. I myself happen to be an Orthodox Christian. So yes, I think that there could be something to this firmament thing that was discussed in the Bible. But he goes on to say, archons are pouring in. Portals are opening and closing. Cursed time loops trap us. Guys, think about deja vu, right? Y'all know what I'm talking about when people talk about things like, oh, there was a glitch in the matrix. What if it's something like this causing it now as far as our cons go? We could just refer to them as the demonic, okay? I do believe in demons. I do, and I have said they could be interdimensional entities, right? I mean, come on, we, we really don't know. And angels could be the same thing. Um, just like good and not bad. Anyways, I like this picture too. It's super neat. It continues, I knew this was happening in the 1940s through the 60s. I've documented the pilots, military men, and settlers who disappeared in sacrificial portal transits. This is freaking fascinating also when you think about their, the Babylon working, the ritual that L. Ron Hubbard um, and Jack Parsons did in the desert, okay? I've thought about that, and I've thought that some weird things have been happening since then. The Moon Children, Aleister Crowley, you all know what I'm talking about, right? I feel like some weird stuff has been happening, uh, and that something has happened to whatever you want to call it, like the the veil between you know our world and other other dimensions or other worlds. Blah blah blah. You all know what I'm trying to say. I think. But I've been thinking some strange stuff has been happening. But the fact that Poincare knew something was wrong already at the turn of the century is new. A deeply troubling turn. No, I absolutely agree with this stuff. I think that something has happened. I think that there's some weird, you know, look up Operation Fishbowl, okay? Don't take my word for it. There was a strange metaphor that Poincare used earlier in measurement of time to describe the formation of memory that felt trite when I first scanned over it. I have only a single observation to add. For an aggregate of sensations to have become a remembrance capable of classification in time, it must have ceased to be actual. We must have lost the sense of its infinite complexity. Otherwise, it would have remained present. It must, so to speak, have crystallized around a center of associations of ideas which will be a sort of label. It is only when they thus have lost all life that we can classify our memories in time as a botanist deranges dried flowers in his herbarium. Interesting. What? 
That is like freaking wild to think about. And what if time is just a dimension of space in itself? Like, come on. Do we know? Do we know? You know what I'm saying? You don't know if you don't know. I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there. Okay. Just consider it. Quote, it is only when they have thus lost all life that we can classify our memories in time as a botanist arranges dried flowers in his herbarium. Every passing moment loosens a unique bundle of causation and effect. The present state of affairs forever. And I love that picture, by the way. I think it's freaking beautiful. And only when this continuous process has run for some time, get it, can we perceive and distinguish snapshots in sequence, moments in a stream. But for Poincare, even as we perceive time, it slips by, life draining, dying, retreating from us behind cases, petrified, empty, a husk. Was Poincaré's theory that time was inevitably slowing, crawling to a halt, that our consciousnesses, our very reality, was being slowed down and fossilized in a kind of invisible metaphysical amber? Was this wishful thinking, hope that he could reach out and touch the dying present? That's such a good, that's such a good point. I shudder to think that Poincaré's slowing of time wasn't just a melancholic dream, but a vision of a coming cataclysm, an end to the waking uh, torrential nightmare of existence. I shudder to think that Poincaré felt this dark future coming and welcomed it. Well, I mean, <laughs> okay. There is some interesting stuff, though, to, to kind of like back this up. I mean, it's not it's not crazy. This is an article from 2007 from New Scientist. Is time slowing down? It can drag or it can race. But what if time stopped altogether? It now seems that time could disappear from our universe. And we may already have found evidence of its forthcoming demise when astronomers observed a decade ago that supernovae are apparently spreading apart faster as the universe ages. They assumed that something must be causing the expansion of the universe to speed up. But so far, nobody's been able to explain where the quote unquote dark energy causing this acceleration comes from. Now Jose Senovia at the University of the Basque County in Bilabo, Spain, and his colleagues, blah, 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 it cuts off. I am not subscribing. No, sir, I will not support your publication, but I appreciate you. And then we have this article, even more interesting, from January of 2018 in Big Think. Time is actually slowing down and will come to a as a radical theory. A theory proposes that the universe is not speeding up in its expansion, but that time is actually slowing down. Fascinating. If you think about it, time can really weird you out. What is it exactly? How do we know it's even real and not a concoction of our brain? We certainly have a use for it, and it pretty much runs our lives on a daily basis. We are constantly checking the time. We make appointments based on it. We judge the courses of our lives based on the seeming fact that certain events happen to us at one point in time and not another. And we don't know how to to get back to the time that's already passed us by. Oh, if only I could be 21 again. I mean, come on. <laughs> oh my goodness. But as Einstein showed in the, well, <clears throat> come on. My noticing has intensified to the threshold where we, we know that Einstein was not what y'all think he was, okay? I'll just leave it at that. Just plant some seeds about y'all doing some research into his patent theft. All right. There's, there's something to that. Continuing. 
We don't really understand all that well how time works. It doesn't seem to work the same way throughout our universe, and it depends on who is observing it. One team of scientists looked at time from a different perspective. They considered the fact that the universe appears to be speeding up in its expansion and wondered, what if that's not really happening either? What if instead time is actually slowing down? And not only that, one day it may come to a complete halt. So my question would be, if that happens, does that mean that like the people that are alive when time stops, do they live forever? Because I would not want that. That's crazy. The idea came to Professor Jose Senovia and colleagues Mark Mars and Raul Vera of the University of Basque County, University of Salamanca. They thought that rather than supernova moving away from us, indicating that the universe expansion is speeding up, we are not actually getting further from anything, but time is slowing down, so the light is taking longer to reach us. There is no mysterious dark energy under their theory either. What? Quote, we do not say that the expansion of the universe itself is an illusion, unquote, said the scientist in an interview. What we say may be an illusion is the acceleration of this expansion. That is the possibility that the expansion is and has been increasing its rate. What will happen once time stops altogether, perhaps in a billions of years from now, then everything will be frozen like a snapshot of one instant forever. Okay, that sounds a little silly. More specifically, the paper that they published, the scientists propose a theory that sees our universe being inside a multidimensional brain, quote unquote, that floats through a higher dimension of space. Okay, somebody was on DMT <laughs> when they came up with this idea. Time under this theory is the fourth dimension that is slowly degrading into a new spatial dimension. In an interview with new scientists, Sanovia expanded on how they arrived at their thinking. Quote, the theory bases its idea on one particular variant of super string theory in which our universe is confined to the surface of a membrane or brain floating in a higher dimension space known as the bulk. In billions of years, time would cease to be time altogether. Sanovia told new scientists, adding, quote, our planet will be long gone by then. One additional argument in favor of this hypothesis was voiced by Gary Gibbons, a cosmologist at Cambridge University. These people get paid to literally just sit around, I think, get stoned all day and like think about this stuff. Imagine. He wondered if time started with the Big Bang, who is to say it can't stop. Quote, we believe that time emerged during the Big Bang. And if time can emerge, it can also disappear. That's just the reverse effect. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I just thought that that was very interesting. I will include the links to everything in the video description, but I'm interested to hear your thoughts on this. What do you think about time, space, the idea that there is a universe, or the idea that in fact we are living inside a firmament? What What are your thoughts on that? Do you agree with what the Bible says or how the Bible describes like uh, what we live in? Or do you think maybe that's wrong? Are you a Christian that also believes in space, outer space, the universe, planets, galaxies, whatever? Uh, is that is that your perspective? I'm just kind of interested to see what all of you guys think and what your different opinions are about this. I find this very, very interesting. I have no idea for sure, but I've always been fascinated by stuff like this. So anyways, I hope you guys have a good day. I will talk to y'all later. Re and Sneed.